Hemochromatosis is a condition where people absorb too much iron from their food. This video will explain the symptoms of hemochromatosis, how it is managed and how it is inherited. I know I ain't doing so fine. First thing that I noticed um, was the colour of my skin and I felt as though I wasn't losing my suntan. I found that a little bit strange. I was also suffering from, a, from a fatigue um, and the fatigue again would send me to bed. I'd get to the stage where I couldn't talk correctly, I'd just be bumbling. Unexplained nagging pain in my right side of my stomach. Nothing would bring it on, it was just there continually. Some days were better, some days were worse. So I used to go running a couple of times a week and started getting um, ankle problems in my early 40s. Normally the body only absorbs as much iron as it needs, but in hemochromatosis the signalling that tells the body that there's enough iron present is defective, and so people continue to absorb iron. And this can get deposited in key organs like the liver, heart and pituitary gland and cause damage to those organs. Most people only absorb a small amount of iron from their diet. However, people with haemochromatosis absorb a lot more iron. This iron builds up in the liver and over many years can cause liver damage, leading to cirrhosis and sometimes liver cancer. It takes many decades for this damage to occur and symptoms can arise from the iron overload such as fatigue, joint aches and pains, and sometimes an irregular heartbeat or shortness of breath and in some people it can affect their menstrual cycle and in some men it can cause impotence. In 2004 I went to a birthday party at my uncle's place and there was a supposedly a cousin of mine selling a book about the Lucas family. We're actually from the first fleet and I'm sixth generation. So he was telling me about this book, so I asked if I'd like to buy it, and I said, yes, please, I would like to buy and have my family tree. When I actually got the book and started to read it, in the front of the, the book was a warning about hemochromatosis, that if you're related to the Lucas family, is two times as likely to have hemochromatosis. So off I went to my GP and asked if, he could have the t if I could have the test. If you have symptoms of haemochromatosis or know that there's haemochromatosis in your family, I'd advise you to see your doctor and have a blood test to check for the gene. When I was first diagnosed, um, the treatment plan was um, a unit of blood three times a week. Well, initially, I gave blood every week for 18 months and that was um, uh, got the ferritin levels right down. I monitor my, monitor my blood every month and from that we work out um, how often I should do venous sections. Generally it ranges between three and six weeks today. You've virtually got to dilute um, your blood levels, take the iron out, that's the only way. The best way to manage haemochromatosis is by blood donations. We would organise for people to give blood donations fairly frequently at the start to get rid of the excess iron, perhaps every one or two weeks. And then once the iron's been removed, they would become a normal blood donor and perhaps give three or four times a year. Since I've been having the treatment, that stomach pain, that nagging, awful, continual stomach pain has just totally disappeared since my ferritin levels have come down. When I was first diagnosed, I sort of thought maybe I should change my diet to um, reduce some of the intakes of red meats and what have you. Um, my doctor said no. Um, it wouldn't make much difference at all. Eating a low iron diet is usually not enough to lower iron levels. This is because the body is very good at absorbing iron, particularly in hemochromatosis. So the amount of iron in a unit of blood is far greater than the amount of iron that can be reduced by change in diet. Specialised diets are not recommended because we would want you to have a healthy balanced diet that includes meat and vegetables and not a, a low iron diet which is not particularly healthy. We would want you however not to have iron tablets or vitamin C tablets because these are not particularly necessary and they can uh, cause the hemochromatosis iron collection to be a little higher. Mm -hmm. 
In general, hemochromatosis occurs when a person inherits a faulty gene from each parent, so they have a double dose of a faulty gene and no healthy copy to compensate. This causes them to absorb too much iron and potentially develop symptoms of the condition. There are two main gene faults that cause hemochromatosis, C282Y and H63D. Most people with hemochromatosis in Australia have two copies of C282Y. Those with two copies of H63D generally don't develop symptoms, while those who have one copy of C282Y and one copy of H63D may develop symptoms, but the vast majority will not. Hemochromatosis is most common in people of European origin. Around 1 in 200 Australians has a double dose of the faulty hemochromatosis gene and therefore is at risk of the condition. Around 1 in 10 Australians has a single faulty copy of the hemochromatosis gene. This is called being a carrier and does not affect health. Uh, so when my sister and I realised that we both had hemochromatosis, we needed to then find out what the status of our children was. So with my three children, they're all carriers. We discovered my husband doesn't have any of the affected genes. But for my sister, she discovered her daughter actually has the double gene as well. So her daughter has hemochromatosis. So from my diagnosis, we discovered it was my sister and then also my niece who also has a condition. Now that there's a genetic test for um, uh, testing the DNA to see whether you have hemochromatosis, it's really important that, that people do this because it's not the fact that you've got hemochromatosis, it's the fact that you know that you've got hemochromatosis. Now, I'm positive my wife doesn't have hemochromatosis, but our four children are actually carriers of hemochromatosis. So, um, so they, they now are all married, so their partners have actually been tested, and my son's wife is actually found to, have, to be a carrier of hemochromatosis as well. We don't know why some people develop iron overload and others don't. Certainly there are some obvious environmental factors, such as the normal menstrual losses that women have, plus the losses that occur during pregnancy and childbirth, and for that reason women do tend to have a lower iron level than men. There are all other influences from the environment as well, such as uh, the alcohol intake of a person, and also if they're taking excessive vitamins, that can also influence their iron level. Generally, when a person is being treated for hemochromatosis, it is recommended that they minimise their alcohol intake. This is because both iron and alcohol can damage the liver. By minimising alcohol intake, this minimises the risk of liver damage. It's like a murky dream. My plan for my future with my health is that I'll just continue to give blood every three months now. Um, with the blood bank, you can actually go more frequently as a, someone who needs to give um, blood with hemochromatosis, but I'm just on a three-month schedule and that will ensure that my levels are kept low and that I won't have all the, the possible complications that can happen um, with having the iron levels go higher. And I just keep, try to keep up with a good healthy diet and, and keep on top of things that way. So I feel quite confident about my future in terms of problems with my liver. If you have hemochromatosis and you donate blood to remove the iron overload or prevent the iron overload, there is no reason why you shouldn't live a long, healthy life with no complications from this. So um, the headaches have gone now that we've reduced the iron. The monitoring of, of all the other symptoms like my, uh, of my other organs, which we do on quite a regular basis, is, is now um, allowing me to, to keep all the symptoms under control. So in conclusion, if someone in your family has hemochromatosis, you should be tested. If you yourself have hemochromatosis, you should make sure that your brothers and sisters, your parents and your children are tested to find out if they have it. So if you have the symptoms of hemochromatosis, such as feeling chronically tired or aches and pains in the joints, you should go and see your doctor and be tested for the gene. Hemochromatosis is difficult to say, but it's simple to diagnose and even easier to treat. And it's a sweet old dream. I had but